now making his way to the cage aggression octagon is Charlie Radke, fighting out of Pura Vida BJJ MMA. He enters the octagon tonight with a win-loss record of two wins versus zero losses. Yeah, man, coming from Pura Vida uh, BJJ, and it looks like he's got Pat Curran in his corner too, so he's got a plethora of tough dudes in his corner, man. If, uh, if that's not a testament to what he's capable of tonight, man, I don't know what is. Yeah, and I mean, we, we know uh, his opponent, Austin Hubbard, is going to come out with some, uh, some, some guys in his corner too. So, yeah, I, I really like it when you have these opportunities to see gyms that aren't always in caged aggression, um, you know, circles, but, you know, some of the more bigger major gyms across the country. And um, I'm expecting big things out of this fight tonight. Yeah, poor, poor Vita being um, a Milwaukee, Wisconsin uh, gym. You know, you got a lot of gyms up there that you know they can cross train. You know, you got um, Rufus Sport. Rufus Sport. Yeah, of course. Uh, they're not far from a, uh, Wanderlei Sil or Wanderlei Sil Daniel Wanderlei's uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu gym. You know, you got Poor Vita. Um, they have a good kickboxing coach there too. I mean, this guy is coming from an area. I mean. Jeff Curran and Pat right. Curran as well. Um, when I talked to my good one before, that's who he was talking about. This guy was coming from, and man, that's that speaks a lot. Yeah. Jeff Curran is a veteran in the sport. Pat Curran obviously is too. Very well respected guy in the Midwest, and I mean, you can't say anything but good things about um, this guy that's fighting tonight. You know, Charlie Radke is definitely gonna be someone to watch here in the future in cage aggression. Now making his way to the cage aggression octagon is Austin Hubbard. Fighting out of elevation fight team. He enters the octagon tonight with a win-loss record of seven wins versus two losses. Definitely no stranger to the cage aggression octagon, man. Not at all, man. You know, and he's up there, he's down there at Evolution in Colorado. You know, look at the people that he's walking out with right now. Drew Dober, Neil Magny, Curtis Blades, who is Got a big fight coming up in the UFC, man. Heavyweight, man. He's got a lot of good guys around him. And uh, he's took his uh, training to a whole nother level down there in Colorado. While he was here, though, he was one of my main uh, training partners, man. I got a lot of gym stories with this guy. And uh, I'm excited to see him back in the cage, aggression cage coming. He, uh, I'm ready to see him uh, if he can mark, uh, get that loss that he was in here last time off, you know. Man, get back to the W column. You know, he took a tough loss against Eric Wisely, went the, uh, went the distance with him, um, who's fighting in our main event tonight. But, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see this one, too. And I, I can't say enough about this kid. You know, I was I was a big training partner of his, and he was a big training partner of mine as well. You know, very crafty stand-up fighter. Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout of the evening is scheduled for three five-minute rounds, powered by Varium Racing. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He stands at even six feet tall and weighed in at 160 pounds. He trains at Pura Vida and is sponsored by Lester's Bison Farm and DC Cobbs. Joining us from Mason City, Iowa, Charlie Chuck Buffalo Radke. And his opponent, Fighting out of the blue corner, he stands 5 feet 10 inches tall and weighed in at 160 pounds. He trains at Team Elevation and is sponsored by Smeltzer Insurance, Hubbard & Sons Construction, Caring Hearts, Jeff's Auto Repair, Most Plumbing and Mechanical, Be Free Chiropractic, and K&G Landscaping. Joining us from Denver, Colorado by way of Sterling, Illinois, Austin Thug. Hubbard! Charlie Radke in the red corner, Austin Hubbard in the blue corner. Your referee for tonight's action is the boss, Bruce Allen. Jeremy J.D. Dorsey here tonight on commentary along with Josh Neal and Zach Micklewright. Let's watch some fights. Words really can't express how excited I am for this fight. This is yeah, one this that... Is you know, looking at it on paper, maybe not a lot of people from the cage aggression. Um, you know, the the guys that come to cage aggression often, they might not realize how big of a fight this is. 
but this is this is a huge one. Yeah, definitely two guys with big time UFC aspirations, man. Definitely, we're gonna see a real good uh, technical barn burner here, man. I, I got some big hopes for this fight right here. Hubbard's taking the center here. Switching stances, throwing some good punches. Nothing really significant has landed yet. Hubbard always lands those. He always lands those awkward punches, um, things that you don't really expect to see, you know. And those are the ones that hurt you the most. Shot him for a takedown and got stuffed. Good breakout here. Charlie's movement here, man. In and out, on his toes, man. That yeah, good jab landed there by Hubbard. Charlie's real bouncy, you know, very, very in and out. Hubbard's got the good angles, but a little more flat footed than Charlie here. It's one of those fights where you just sit back and you sort of wait for the explosion to happen. And you, and you know it's coming. Yeah, this is, I mean, this has been a nail biter for the first half of this round. And it's, I, my eyes are wide open trying to see what's going to happen next. And you, you, you never know in a matchup like this. I don't know much about Ratke, but man, so far, you can tell his experience is very good. And he's going for a takedown here. Got the body lock on Hubbard, got him up against the cage, throwing some good knees. Hubbard's defending well, got the wizard in. Radke's doing a, a good job of keeping his head under Hubbard's a nice career. How important this fight is they might think that these guys are, are tentative or you know they don't they don't look like they know what they're doing but these guys both respect each other and know exactly how big of a fight this is oh yeah, oh, yeah. most definitely both calm cool and collected man really technical man I like what i see it on both guys right now yeah, they're i mean you can really tell that they're trying to figure each other out you know, both these guys are switching stances cutting angles throwing throwing little punches jabs trying to feel each other out good push kicks there by each other you know, it, it's it's a chess match here. Good hooks traded there. Nice little switch push kick there by Hubbard. Seconds left in this first round of the matchup here at Cage Regression 21 between Charlie Radke and Austin Hubbard. Radke a little upset by that accidental groin shot there. Hubbard went to throw a knee and his foot got a little far and flipped him right into the groin. Right in the giblets. Yeah, definitely not intentional, but Racky did not like that. I can't really blame him. No, yeah, most definitely. I feel like he uh, felt he had a good rhythm going, man. You know, those shots, man, they knock you out of it, man. They can take a lot out of you. Pretty upset gets, about it. Keeps it in a different type of way. Looks like he's ready to go, though. We might get this fight started pretty quick here. He's got five minutes, but it looks like he's only going to take 20 or 30 seconds.
Here we go. Back to the action. Well, it looks like Radke's a little pissed off by it. Ten seconds left here in this first round. Not a whole lot of action so far. It's going to be tough for the for the judges to, you know, pick a winner for this round. It's definitely a real, real technical round for both guys. Both landed shots, and you know, it, you know, you like you said, it's going to be hard to pick a winner there, man. For that round. So yeah, if you're if you're Racky coming off of that that low blow, um, it looked like like you said. He looked like he was a little upset by that. Came out with a little extra fire at the end of uh, that round. So I'm wondering, is he going to keep that going, or is he going to go back to, you know, trying to trying to keep himself calm? I'm pretty sure he'll try to keep himself calm and everything. But you can tell by how he just in that whole first round, man. He's here to play no games. He's not here for for really the buddy buddy man. He's here to do some work. Yeah, not not big on uh, touch gloves or you know hugging it out. He he wants to get in here and battle. Cage Aggression 21 matchup between Charlie Radke and Austin Hubbard. Radke in the red shorts, trimmed with black, and Austin Hubbard in the red, white, and blues. He only being uh, two and zero on his pro record, man. You can tell he's got the high-level good people around him, man. With how he's fighting right now, he's got really good composure. He's really technical, and he got a good head on him, man. Uh, I like what he's doing right now. Yeah, for sure. It looks like he got he got a little growing shot of his own. Looks like Hubbard's ready to continue fighting. The Kimpe Matumbo finger wave he gave to him, like, no, no, no. They're here to play no games, man. Now coming, going into the later rounds, Hubbard is usually the type of guy that likes to get a takedown and be real powerful on top. Uh, I'd be curious to see, not knowing a whole lot about uh, Radke's game plan and his previous fights, and you know, not seeing a lot of tape on him, I'd be curious to see what his game plan will be in a... In a in the later rounds of something like this, but I, I'm hoping to see a takedown from Hubbard, hopefully later in this round or definitely in the third round. You know it can change in the blink of an eye, but both guys seem to be a little bit of a, a stalemate. I think they both just respect each other's power. You know exactly that uh, if they slip up a little bit, it's rough for them. Yeah, I mean, it's a very tactical uh, game plan that both of these guys have against each other. They're both good stand-up fighters, and, and one shot could drop either of them. You know, this, this, this could be a quick ending fight. Yeah, to get back to what Zach's touching up on uh, with Hubbard and his wrestling, and yeah, I'd like to see him mix it up. You know, the wrestling's there. We know that. We've seen it before from him. You know, I, I, I don't want somebody to change up uh, how, how they fight, you know, get one dimensional, you know, just all stand up. I mean, I want to see him mix it up, mix in those takedowns. And, and cause he's got a really good ground game, really good a wrestling base, and really good jiu jitsu as well. So I think he'd be good to add that in tonight. Sleet uppercut there by Hubbard. Yeah, one of his, one of his real crafty punches that he uses quite often. He sets a lot of things up off that. As po as powerful as a little, uh, a little off balance there. Yeah, a little off balance. As powerful as Hubbard is on top when he's on the ground. You know, his stand up doesn't really show his power. 
but he's very he's a very crisp puncher, and I'd like to see him do it. Good crisp shot. See what he can do with that. Got to start looking for a takedown by one of these. Kind of like a, like a, let's say a, a TJ Dillashaw. He's not a power puncher, but a crisp puncher, man. And we've seen even you know his fights in the UFC of TJ Dillashaw. Crisp punches, man. You don't got to have power. If they land right, boom, you can put people out. That's absolutely right. Coming up on one minute left in this second round matchup here at Cage Aggression 21 between Charlie Radke and Austin Hubbard. Scheduled for three rounds. And, and as, as slow as this fight's going, I'd like to see this as a five round fight. Right. Because I really don't think three rounds is going to do this fight justice. Got him on the cage right here, you know, pressure him, pressure him and, get, and shoot for something on the cage. Get him against the cage, you know, uh, get in there and get some dirty, so, you know, some uh, some cage work, you know. Yeah, a little dirty boxing, a little wrestling here. Make him hand fight. Yeah, clinch him up, tire him down, because yeah, get him to use those anaerobic muscles. And it does not good combo there by Hubbard. Nice push kick to the goal. Good knee. for the takedown there. I think that last little flurry could have yeah, sealed the round yeah. for Hubbard there. Yeah. And you can see Austin Hubbard sort of, you know, opening up a little bit towards the end of that round. I wonder if that's going to give him the confidence to, to start out the next round that way as well. Yeah, I mean, I really hope so, man. Both these guys need to open up. you you got a win or a loss that's about to come to you in five minutes. So, you know, it's you got to go go for broke in this third round. This is definitely the round four, man. The, two rounds man they were nail biters almost man you know for both guys you know so right here like I, i've said before it comes down to who's ready who wants it more right now you know what i mean and i think if if hubbard can uh you know like we've been saying work some takedowns you know work his wrestling that we know he has he can get it and if i think if uh charlie was to open up more a little bit on stand up you know maybe it can go his way as well you know yeah it seems like a little bit of a more explosive puncher uh radke does and I'd like to see him throw, be throw better combos, maybe end with some kicks. And like we talked about before, neither of these guys have been on the ground for any lengthy period of time. And you Not might decide that, hey, maybe it might be time to throw go for that takedown. I know both guys have stubbed takedown attempts by the other already, so. And how much of these guys hold back? How apprehensive are they? Uh, you know, because of the fact that this is like, what, a, a three-week fight. Both these guys took this fight on short notice to fill a spot, you know. And hats off to them, by the way, on a side note for, you know, filling this spot on the card. And what a good matchup that Mike could have made here. Both guys' gas tanks don't look to be near empty at all. So, you know, you'd be thinking they both got a lot in the tank. Man. Let's, let's put it all here. It's the last round, five minutes. Let's do it. Looks like they're both throwing, throwing with a little more, little more uh, nice body shot. Kind of trading roles here. Oh, good uppercut there by Hubbard. Hubbard with a lot of good angle changes, feints and fakes, you know, keeping him guessing. But he's got to throw, you know. He's faking and faking, but when are you going to throw those punches to keep, to keep him on his heels? Not cracking the yeah. Him. yeah, man, he's got really good feints and really good movement, man. If he could just open up and throw them punches along with it. You know what I mean, man? I think he'd be unstoppable, but instead he's just holding back right now. It's 
Somebody's got to pull the trigger. Man. Got to follow that up. All we need is a nice flurry from either one of these guys. And in my opinion, this this fight could be one and one. You know? I think Radke, with that last the last uh, few seconds in the first round, he had that nice flurry. He could have sealed that first round, and then. Hubbard in the second round had a nice couple of plays. Oh, good combo there by Hubbard. Here we go. Open it up a little bit now. Let's keep it going. Looks like Radke's nose. It might be leaking a little bit. It's off the red. Coming up on two minutes left in his third and final round between Charlie Radke and Austin Hubbard here at Cage Aggression 21. And you hear from both of the corners, open up, open up, throw, throw. Man, I, I couldn't agree with them more. Both of these guys really need to get this going. They gotta go for broke here. I mean, you gotta win decisively. If they wanna, if they wanna improve to the next level if they want to get to the UFC you got to win in distinctive fashion but you can't play it safe at all I just I don't like that they're both keeping it one dimensional man I know both these guys they probably have they did it, but as I say that the takedown here from Charlie got some on the cage looking for, for his back got one hook in but Hubbard's doing a good job keeping his back against the cage and he's fighting the hand well he's got a good two on one here Right, he's only got one leg in, so he can probably defend pretty easily. Yeah. Turn into him. Right, he's doing a good job, though, sticking to him like glue. Got that great vine on his left leg there. Run right now, man. This round is still in my mind. Is up for grabs right here with 50 yeah, seconds left. Somebody's got to do something here. They got to win. Here we go. That's going for a take. Right there. Back. Charlie's doing a good job of being aggressive. He's got Hubbard's doing one a hook good in job. again. Staying up against the cage, kind of stifling his offense here. Got his back, but he needs to turn into him. As long as Hubbard can keep that shoulder right there and keep his back somewhere against the cage, just like that right there. Now, he needs to get aggressive because yes. those two takedown attempts could have sealed this win for him. Yeah, we well, have your back on the cage in the judge's eyes, man. You know, you don't know what they're thinking, man. Every second, that's that's the second you're losing the fight. Right here, 10 seconds. Good fight there. Not fight. really the fight I expected. Yeah, no, no. no. It's, it's, yeah, a very tactical. Um, not a lot of highlights. You know, not a lot of oohs and ahs in that fight. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you got to have, you know, you, you, you sort of come into it expecting guys to go, um, you know, fast and free. But these guys both both definitely respected each other's uh, ability and power. And nobody really wanted to take too much of a big risk during this fight. Can't necessarily say that I blame them. But um, get my face not in mean, either. Coming from a gambling man like myself, man, you gotta bet big to win big. So you know you gotta you gotta put your ass on the line, and, and you know and throw some bombs. You know maybe you'll get caught, but if you stay aggressive and you stay on the grind and, and you're out there biting down in your mouthpiece and you're swinging for the fences, man, you're more than likely gonna land before your opponent. And man, when you wanna improve and you wanna excel in this game. You gotta take chances, you gotta take risks, because with big risk comes big reward. Most definitely. I get back to what you're saying. I, I think it was a good fight, but I expected it to be a little more a little more action and you know, somebody to go out there with that instinct to they want the finish, you know. We didn't see that obviously. But first time seeing Charlie Radke in the cage rush cage, I am impressed by him. I, I oh, like sure. I like what he did for sure. He's a really good kid. And uh, but I feel like we 
kind of expect a little bit more out of Austin Hubbard, but he, at, at the end of the day, he still put on a, a good performance. You know, he did. Yeah. And I hope he's not expecting like a hometown decision or anything like that. You know what? He did a great job, but he could have done more. I, I feel like we could have got more out of both of these guys. Yes. And speaking of which, I mean, it has to be darn near impossible for your, your, your judges to come back with a decision in a situation like that. Yeah. They definitely got their hands full on this one. Yeah. I expect a split or something. Let's see what he has to say. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to your judges' scorecard for the decision. Our judges scored this contest 29, 28, 29, 28, and 30, 27, declaring your winner by unanimous decision, Austin Fun Homer. All right, I'm gonna get a quick word here with our winner, Austin Hubbard. Austin, um, finally get to step back in the cage, the Gresham cage, and get back on the right foot. How's it feel coming back in front of the hometown crowd and getting the W? Oh, it felt great. You know, my last fight coming off a loss, you always have that extra pressure on you. And uh, I don't know, it felt good. Now, win. <laughs> now, I know you're always coming out looking for the finish. Uh, came out against a tough opponent in Charlie Radke. Both of you guys took this fight on fairly short notice. Is there, is there anything different that you wanted to do with tonight's fight other than, like I said, obviously go for the finish? Uh, you know, this was like my first three-round fight in like two years, so it um, took me a little bit to adjust to having to pick it up, you know, less rounds. The first round, I was, felt a little slow, but... Um, you know, I came back strong and knew I only had three, so I was trying to really pour it on him. But he good, did good, like always threatening with that counter and stuff. So uh, I was trying to be smart, trying to be aggressive and doing what I can. Well, we could definitely tell all the hard work you've been putting in since the last time we saw you. Uh, is there anyone that you want to thank that helped you out along the way before we let you get to the locker room, Austin? Uh, just my team that came down. Uh, my team back in Colorado, my parents, my family, uh, everyone here. Uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, again, thanks again to Mike Goodwin for getting us up on this show on short notice. Appreciate it. Well, we know it's a long haul coming back home from Colorado to come compete in the cage digression cage. But I know we're all definitely looking forward to the next time we get to see you. Until then, ladies and gentlemen, one more time for your winner, Austin Thud Hubbard.